All right, unit three, video number 11, exponential growth. Here is my formula. And yes, you'll get this on the test, but this is the formula you're going to use. F of t, the function of t, equals a, parentheses, 1 plus r, raised to the t power. And down here, here's what those letters mean. So that a right here means the initial amount or what you start out with, because we're talking about money here. The r, this right here, is the rate of increase, and it has to be in a decimal. You don't leave it as a percentage. And t... This T right here is going to be the time, but that has to be in years. So not months, not weeks, not days. It has to be in years. All right, the example says, In 2000, the population of Nerdville was 100 people. Since then, the population has had a constant rate of 30% each year. What will the population be in 2020 if this constant rate remains? So the first thing I need to do is I need to define what my A or my initial amount is what my R or my rate is, and what my T or my time is. Now, to me, rate is an easy one to pick up. You're looking at numbers in the problem. You're looking for the one that has a percentage on it. So the rate is 30%, which written as a decimal is 0 0.30, okay? The time is another one that's, to me, pretty easy to pick up. You're looking for the time of years, the difference here. Well, I'm looking at in 2000 was when it started, and they want to know in 2020. So my time is going to be 20 because we're talking about a 20-year difference, a 20-year span. And then A is my initial amount, so I'm going to look for, technically, what do I have left? 100 people. So my initial amount is 100. So now it's about plugging it into a formula. It's just the formula you're going to need that calculator, okay? So I'm going to plug in what I know. So the function of 20 is equal to 100, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.30 raised to the 20 power. So I'm going to continue using my order of operation skills. When I do that, function of 20 is equal to 100. I can simplify inside my parentheses, 1.30 raised to the 20 power. Okay, you're going to need the calculator on this one because my guess is you do not know what 1.3 raised to the 20 power is. I didn't know it either. So you're going to use your calculator. You're going to plug in 1.3 carat 20 and you get 190.05. And we can talk in class what that button looks like on our graphing calculators. Um, and then you're just finishing up. Multiply those together and you get this lovely number, 19,004.96. Now, since we're talking about people, our answer would simply be 19,004 people because we can't cut a person. We need to cut the decimal out. That would be my final answer for the people. The population would be that number. Okay? All right, let's try another one. You're given a gift of $3,000 bond on your 10th birthday. The value of stock increases at 1.89% per year. Part A, write an exponential growth equation for this situation. Simplify your equation, completely showing all your work. Okay, so we need our formula. So our formula, remember, is F of T is equal to A parentheses 1 plus R raised to the T power. We're going to plug in what we know. So now I need to go with, I need my A, I need my R, and I need my T. So we are looking at all these values. Now, in this case, if you notice, we're writing exponential. The numbers up here are 3,000. Tenth is when it's being given to you and 1.89%. So at this point, my T is going to be T because I, they haven't given me an actual value of years. My initial is going to be 3,000, and then my percent is going to be 0 0.0189, and yes, include all of the numbers. It's very important when you're talking about money, you want to include all of the numbers as far as they will allow you. So now I'm going to plug that into the formula. So F of T, because again, right now, I don't have any years of T. My, I know my A is 3,000. I know my R is 0 
raised to the t power. I'm done. I can't go any farther in this equation because I don't know what the value of t is. If I knew the value of t, I could take this and find a, a determination, but we're going to do that in the next part. All right, so here's the problem. You're given a gift of 3,000 bond on your 10th birthday. The value of stock increased at 1.89%. Create a table to represent how much stock will be worth after five years. Then graph the table and label each axis. So I'm going to talk about my time, which, of course, is in years. And then I'm going to talk about my value. How is my value changing of this bond? Okay, so we're going to look at zero years. One, two, three. Four, five. I know at zero years, it's 3,000. Okay, so remember up here what we discovered before. Here's the formula that I'm going to be using that goes with this actual problem. So my T is what this is right here, and that's what's going to keep changing. So when I plug in a 1 for T, I'm now going to take this times this, so that leaves me with 3,056.7.7. So $3,056.70. So when I plug in a 2, again, I'm just plugging in 2. So that means I'm going to have to square this 1.0189 and then multiply it by 3,000. And I did this, honestly, guys, in my calculator. Um, I just kept using the calculator. And then I get 3,114 and 47 cents. When I plug in a 3, I get 3,173 and 34 cents. When I plug in a 4, I get 3,233 and 31 cents. And when I plug in 5, I get 3,294 and 42 cents. <coughs> so again, we went to 5 because of this right here. It said worth after 5 years. Okay? So then now they asked me to create a graph. So when I create a graph, I'm really only in that first quadrant. And down here, one, two, three, four, five, is my, I'm going to squeeze it over here, time. So my time in years is on there. And over here is my value. Now, I'm going to use the idea of the broken graph, which I know some of you hate. And start here at 3,000. And I went up by 50s. Um, we'll see if I can do this real well here. So then, yeah, I went up by three, by 50s each time. So building my graph. Okay. So then again, I'm just going to follow this over here. And so at zero, I'm at 3,000. At one... I'm just a little bit above here. At 2, I'm at 3,173, so I'm in between these two. At 4, I'm above, so I'm in between these two. And oh, I'm a little off on my graph. Um, so at 4, sorry, I'm over here. Because um, actually... <laughs> My three, I was right here. I think I skipped two. Two, I was right, that's what I did, I skipped two. And then five, I am up here. So if I draw this, you see the graph is constantly going up. So there, I graphed it, you're just plotting those points. Okay, so you're still working with the same problem. You're given a gift of $3,000 bond on your 10th birthday. The value of the stock increases at 1.89% per year. Predict the value of the bond on your 25th birthday. So I went ahead, brought that formula back, because now we're talking about the difference from year 10, the 10th birthday, through the 25th birthday, which means a difference of 15. So I need to plug in my T value is 15, because 15 years will have gone on to determine what that value is. And here again, you're going to need to use that calculator when you do, because again, order of operations says I have to do my power first. So I've got to do my 1.0189 to the 15th power, which in fact is 1.32426. Again, you want to keep every number that you see while you're doing math like this, because it involves money. You don't want them to skip out on money. 
and when you multiply them together, you get three thousand nine hundred seventy-two and seventy-eight cents. So you, all you had to do was plug it into the formula and make sure you had the right um, t value or year value. All right, still working the same problem. You're given a gift of three thousand dollar bond on your tenth birthday. The value of the stock increases at one point eight nine percent per year. Your bank offers offers you the opportunity to reinvest your three thousand dollars into a savings account that earns a hundred dollars per year. Use your calculator to determine at what point in time would the two accounts be equivalent. Which account is a better investment if you plan on keeping the account open indefinitely? So what I did is I brought back that chart from the a previous question um, for the equation we worked with before, looking at those amounts, and now I'm going to do the same thing for this. We had to write an equation. We know that we're earning $1,000 per year, so that is simply just the 100 or $100 per year. So that's 100T and 3,000 at all times. So same deal, we start out with 3,000. So here you can see the pattern is getting there. Like you see what's going on here. Um, so we can find out where they are equivalent um, just by looking at this chart. We can see what's happening with this. Um, I can keep going over here. I'll do some more time. And value, um, 6 would be 3,600, 7 would be 3,700, okay? So now it asks us at what point in time would the two accounts be equivalent? Um, so looking at this, the equivalency is... All right, so the question asked me, which, use, the use your calculator to determine at what point in time would the two accounts be equivalent? Well, here's the deal. You're looking for this number being the same. Well, right now, even at one year, you're already making more money when you're getting $100 per year than if you're going with this. Um, remembering, we might want to plug in that 15, because if you recall... When we had the 15, we got 3972.78. Over here, if we do 15, that means we have 100 times 15, which is 1,500 plus 3,000, which is 4,500. So in this case, which is not always the case, it looks like um, getting the $100 per year is better um which i don't know we could try some really crazy big numbers let's try mm, let's say you hold it for 50 years let's plug in that equation and see what happens so we have our 1.0189 raised to the 50th power and we're going to multiply that times 3000 okay so we get 7650 and 67 cents but we're going to see about this one raised to the 50. So 100 times 50 is 5,000 plus 3,000. Still better. So depending on how long you're going to have this, um, it looks like I would go with $100 per year as opposed to the 1.89%. Um, so it's <laughs> that's the deal on this problem. That's not always the case. Sometimes um, when you get exponential, which is what this is over here, it definitely goes at a higher rate than the linear will. But this one is definitely, um, that 100 is throwing it off. All right, the last one for this. Consider the functions f of x equals 3, parentheses, 2, raised to the x power, and g of x, so just another function, equals 3, parentheses, raised to the x plus 2 power. Which function increase more quickly as x increases? How do growth factors support your answer? Okay, so here's the deal. G of x will increase more, more quickly, because um, this is because x plus 2 will always be larger 
the next. So looking back up here, this x right here compared to this x plus 2, this x plus 2 is always thus going to be 2 larger than just the x. So this is going to grow or increase quicker than this one over here. 